A very warm welcome to 28th IEEE International Conference on Image Processing and to our session on Feature Fusion and Zumbal Architecture with Active Learning for Microscopic Blood Smear Analysis. Hope everyone is safe and doing good. I have been working on this project as an undergrad student in Department of Electrical Engineering at Indian Institute of Technology, Tirupati under the supervision of Dr. Ram Krishna Gorthi. Before I dive into the presentation, I want to give a quick overview of our work so that everyone can follow through the rest of the presentation. As you may have noticed from the title, we work with microscopic blood smears to perform complete blood count, cell classification and disease identification. Blood cell characterization plays a vital role in most of the disease identification and diagnosis. With recent developments in digitization and low cost blood slide scanners, the typical process involves capturing of blood smear images followed by cell identification and classification. In this work, we mainly focus on how our deep learning model can be used for WBC subclass classification and as well malignant B cell identification. We also believe that this model can be used for multiple microscopic based classification tasks with less labeled data. In our work, we also try to address that smaller CNNs with more features can perform better than deep neural networks. Generally, the deeper networks require a large amount of labeled data to train well for the classification task and also requires huge time for training. In medical domain, getting the labeled data set is very costly and difficult as well. So we propose a lightweight convolutional neural network called multi-channel cytopathology analysis network for cell classification and disease identification. We use active learning based model training to overcome the labeling cost and to produce better accuracies with less data samples. The two main problem statements we try to address with our current approach are classification of WBCs into subclasses and identification of malignant B cells from normal precursor B cells. There have been many approaches for cell identification and classification starting from image processing techniques to state-of-the-art CNN deep learning models. In recent times, with the help of transfer learning, the pre-trained models are able to achieve higher accuracies, but lack of sufficient labeled data is a key bottleneck. So we tried to integrate and develop an architecture with best features using image processing as inputs followed by deep feature extractors with a classification layer. In MIKAI 2017 conference, a work on Stein deconvolution layer has been proposed which states that pixel stain quantities offer a fundamental view of interaction between tissues and stain chemicals. SD layer converts the image from RGB domain to optical density domain based on staining process, which provides a different set of features to the model. So we have used SD layer as one of our shallow feature inputs up for our model to provide more information on optical density space along with RGB space. Active learning has become an integral part of most of the architectures recently because it can reduce the cost of labeling by eliminating labeling of more similar data samples. There are two important steps in the proposed approach. The first one is to build a generalized, simple, yet effective CNN architecture, and we call it multi-channel cytopathology analysis net. The second one is to use active learning based training in order to get better performance with less labeled data. In our proposed architecture, we have defined three stages, namely shallow feature inputs, deep feature extractors and classification stage. In shallow feature input stage, we convert the RGB image using image processing techniques and SD layer to provide three channel input layer. In deep feature extractors, we have a simple five layered CNN architectures as feature extractors. And in classification stage, we concatenate all the features and use fully connected layers for the classification. More about shallow feature input layer. You can see that 
input image has three channels red green blue and when we pass this input image through stain deconvolution layer we get three optical density channels which provides tissue specific stain absorption quantities as input features in the same way when we pass the input image through color channel differencer we get the difference of color channels as input layer the difference of red and blue channel highlight the texture of the cytoplasm and the difference of blue and red channel highlight the texture of nucleus more clearly so this combination of different input layers provides more features to our architecture more about cnn feature extractors we have used these two simple cnn architectures as our feature extractors both the cnns have five layers of convolution blocks with convolution layer followed by batch normalization followed by relu activation layer followed by either max pooling or average pooling layers each cnn architecture extracts a 5 to 12 feature vector which are then concatenated and given to a feed forward neural network more about active learning active learning enables the model to train better with very small labeled data of the whole data set it aims at identifying ambiguous samples which can help the architecture or model to perform better in classification as you can see in this example we have two classes green and red so if you actually select some random data samples and find the decision boundary that will not be accurate but if you actually select the data samples that are close to the decision boundary then you will be able to identify the decision boundary with less number of labeled data samples which indeed indicates that you don't need to label all the data set there are different ways of applying active learning but in our work pool based active learning method based on final class scores applying from the architecture is used to present two use cases one is to show how it helps model and training to select most appropriate samples for deciding the decision boundary and another to show how it helps in reducing the cost of labeling the whole data set now let's see how active learning can be implemented in our current approach we take 20% of the whole data set and label it from an expert pathologist with an approximately equal number of data samples from all of classes now we train the architecture with this 20% labeled data until validation loss gets minimized with this trained architecture we predict scores for the remaining 80% of the data set if the maximum probability score of output classes of a data sample is less than mentioned threshold in our case it's 0.6 then the data sample is labeled and then added to the training set each time we add few ambiguous data samples the network is retrained and the process is repeated until the number of ambiguous data samples being added becomes very small results of wbc subclass classification when we train the simple five layered cnn model without active learning implementation produced an accuracy of 87 percentage while the same base model with implementation of active learning achieved an accuracy of 90 percentage with just 28 percent of whole data set on the other hand the proposed architecture when trained through active learning for 130 epochs and 30 percentage of the data set resulted in a much higher accuracy of 97 percentage in wbc subclass classification than resnet 152 this indicates that the smaller networks with implementation of active learning and better features can perform better results of wbc disease classification when we implemented our proposed approach on cnmc 2019 challenge data set we produced an accuracy of 85.80% which is higher than 
the multi-stream inception ResNet V2 architecture. The major difference comes with the better shallow features and active learning. Now let's see the performance of active learning based training with our current architecture. We started with 6000 training samples which produced 75% test accuracy. In the second iteration when we added the data samples which got probability score of less than 0.6 we got around 44% training data set and which produced 82% test accuracy and in the third iteration we got few more data samples added and we got the highest accuracy of 85.80. Based on the results we conclude that the multi-channel cytopathology analysis net along with shallow feature input layers and active learning can help analyze the strained microscopic images and we also believe that the generality and compactness of the architecture can be used to perform multiple classification tasks in cytopathology with the same architecture thank you